hope you're doing good. Um, this is Dr. G. So today, guys, we will be talking about study partners. So I have been asked while in medical school, um, did you have study partners, were in study groups, and what was your approach as far as like studying with others, or did you just study alone? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So first of all, let me just say, study partners, study groups, definitely not for everyone. It works for some people, and it does not work very well for some other folks. So it's not a one size fits all kind of thing, okay? You just have to figure out if it works for you or not. Personally, I tried it. I actually tried studying um, study groups. I also tried studying with study partners and I found out it didn't quite work out for me. Initially, it seemed like um, it was okay. And I get the idea for some people, they really get so much benefit out of it. Um, the important thing is if you're gonna pick a study partner, pick someone that's smart and motivated. I mean, I know it doesn't have to be like the smartest person in the class, the smartest in the room, but the motivation part is very important. If this person is not motivated, if this is not someone that you guys can actually hold each other accountable when you're studying together, then I think it sort of defeats the purpose here. So being smart, being motivated, it's a huge part and holding each other accountable, you know, someone also that you can actually bounce off ideas when it comes to like what you've studied or what you guys are learning at that time. Um, that's a very important part there. But like I said earlier, I didn't find it to be very effective for me just because sometimes in my experience, what always happened was um, when we got together to study, the whole conversation will be all about talking about personal things. You know, people talking about their boyfriends, their girlfriends, their spouses, their kids, and what the dog and the cats did and things like that. And that creates some sort of distraction in your study um, process, you know? So I didn't really find it helpful in my situation. Another thing that also made it not a good choice for me was, see, I love to teach, right? I love to explain things, especially when we're in groups and stuff. But sometimes you get those that are in the group and all they want to do is just consume the information and just sit there and not want to make any contribution at all and you as one of the students there you're thinking to yourself like wow okay I'm just here um, contributing to what we're discussing but a few other people are now wanting to contribute anything so it's more like you pass on the knowledge that you have but then in return you leave the day and not even being rich or not gaining anything additional to what you knew before you got there. So that was always my situation with study groups and stuff. And also the biggest one, to be honest, the biggest one was the whole chit chatting, everyone talking, laughing. And at the end of the day, we spent like four or five hours sitting there and it's like, we didn't really get anything done, you know? So, but um, like I said, study partners and study groups can be a very, very good um, way to study if you pick the right people. But then again, you also have to find out if this is something that works for you. I tell people when it comes to studying, you have to pick what works for you. There are people that are just visual learners and there are some that are like auditory and visual and there are some listed, oh yeah, um, I don't even have to do much, just to read through that textbook like one time and then boom, I got everything. So you have to know the kind of learner that you are and what really works for you. For me, study partners, study groups did not help me at all. But I tell you what works though. If you and your study team decide to say, we wanna review X number of questions, let's say you all questions or whatever past questions, um, Q band questions that you guys decide to review, and then you wanna to come together, discuss that and bounce ideas you know, off of each other. I find that to be sort of helpful though. I remember when I was in med school, this was one we did in Ohio, I me and a group, like we will get together in the library, like say like the MBME questions, from the MBME assessment question. So we'll probably say we're gonna do MBME 13 today. And since we're doing it, so everybody do it on your own at home and stuff like that, whatever you score, we don't care, it doesn't matter, but just kind of review that. And then when we get together, we're all reviewing the questions, sort of going around the table, right? Everyone like making contributions about what you gain out of it, or why do you think A was the answer? Why do you think B was the answer? And then sort of offer your own explanations for that. And most times too, I find it helpful just because you have students that have these interesting mnemonics that you didn't even know about or very like interesting ways that they explain it that makes it easier for you to understand so in those ways 
study groups can be beneficial. But the important thing with that, you have to prepare ahead of time. You gotta get ready. You don't just be like, oh, we're studying together today, pick up your bag and then head on to the library or wherever you guys meet and stuff and not preparing ahead of time. Then it wouldn't be an effective study session. So that's my take on that. Don't get me wrong. This can be pretty good. This can really be helpful if that is something that works for you. All right, guys, that's all I got for now. So I think the simple rule of thumb here is when it comes to deciding if um, study partners work for you or not is to try it out, right? It doesn't hurt to try. So maybe find you a study partner who you think will be the best fit for you, um, like the best person that you can study with or maybe a study group and see if that works. So give it a try. And if you try it out, it doesn't work. Yeah, you study on your own. I happen to be one of those that do better studying by myself. So by studying by myself, I can easily plan a schedule and then set a goal that I hope to accomplish for that day and then get it done without having to rely on someone else. That's what works for me when it comes to studying. Again, find what works for you guys and then stick with it. I think that's the most important tip here. Okay guys, that's it for now. Um, please remember to subscribe, like, comment, hit that notification button. And until next time y'all, it is Dr. G.